Hey everyone, it's Rita with Everything Homemade and it has been a crazy busy spring and the beginning of summer here. It's at the end of June and we've had beautiful weather, the most beautiful weather I would say in the last few years. We've had rain, we've had sun, we've had like the perfect growing season and I praise God for that because we need a break just for things to flourish and grow. So I'm going to take you for a little garden tour, um, show you what we're growing, show you what we're up to in the garden, just to let you know how things are going here. Our family is doing great. It's been super, super busy where, you know, I am waking up at four in the morning and non-stop till around 11 o'clock at night. And again, that is either in the garden doing dairy. We have three milk cows on this year. So there's tons of cheese, tons of yogurt, um, every dairy byproduct you can think of needs to get made. So there is just so much happening. Plus I'm trying to type up this everything stevia cookbook and get the, at least an hour or so every couple of days in to get that out for this fall. So it has been busy and I'm so excited though. I'm so excited for this year and I have spent countless hours in the garden lately just to make sure that we have an enough food for the winter and so that's super important as well. So if you don't know we do have a website everything-homemade.com. Check that out if you want to subscribe and follow us. Definitely do and keep up to date on what's happening as much as I can post. So let's take a look of what we're growing this year in the garden. Okay, so let's first just take an overview of the garden spot here. So looking really nice and green. I mean, this is the most beautiful coming garden at the end of June I've had for several years. Last year at this time we were at plus 43 degrees Celsius and everything was frying. No water or so no rain, nothing, just heat. Everything was dying. The year before was so chilly and then we got rain but the rain came too, too um, late and then the bugs came and it was just horrific weather this year the farmers us gardeners are just praising god for the beautiful spring and the beginning of summer it's been absolutely wonderful so the first row here is actually a plant that i grew up with but i haven't grown myself but my grandma grew it and my mom grew it and i just happened to remember it and I was like man I haven't eaten those before. These are fava beans also known as broad beans and so they're just growing like crazy. I call them my little trees of the garden because they kind of just remind me of these little trees growing and so they can reach up to throw three to four feet tall so that's why they're on the border of the garden so i got a pretty good row here going and they're looking absolutely phenomenal right here we have beans so here we have yellow beans and green beans and off to the side right there we have um they're called purple queen bees i they're called purple queen beans. So this is like the bean row. So we're gonna can um, what comes off of here, eat fresh and definitely dehydrate. Dehydrating beans is awesome because all you need to do is throw them in soups or stews. It's just instant veggies right there. So we got lovely red beets coming here. Beautiful row of red beets. And at the very end here, we have Swiss chard. I love Swiss chard salads. My husband and I, I mean, we can have Swiss chard salads all, every supper. We just love it. So we got some Swiss chard growing here. Down this row here, these rows here that I'm showing you, they're around 33 feet long, around four, three, 
four feet wide depending on but we got carrots um, growing there they're coming up absolutely beautiful then you come straight across here another border and we have what I call the everything homemade squash this squash is basically a mixture of like zucchini spaghetti squash pumpkin but I'm now growing the seeds of it because it tastes so good. It is like my favorite squash. It's creamy, it's crisp, it hardens off, it stores beautifully the seeds. It's full of seeds, we roast them, oh my word. So they're coming through the uh, racks right there. They're just starting to, so this whole thing will be like a living wall of squash vines and the fruit go onto the the shells what I call it and it's just such a beautiful setup so they're just starting to to um, really get going it's just so exciting they look so beautiful okay we got parsley and parsley is a critical part of our garden so there's a lot of it because we dry everything and we need about six to eight cups of powdered parsley and I use that to help with my varicose veins because it takes away the pain of my veins so I take one teaspoon of this um, powder every morning and when it's that time of the month um, I usually up it to two teaspoons for a few days and I literally have no pain on my varicose veins and I have them pretty bad so this is critically important plus we love it on all our um, food as well so this is a new crop this year that I have never grown nor has my parents or my grandma because we're all gardeners and this is root parsley so I figured instead of going hard on all this curly parsley all summer because I love eating parsley fresh I can harvest the root parsley leaves which taste just like parsley while well, it is parsley just different looking leaves but anyway then I can go harder on on this parsley and save the curly parsley for drying and powdering so this is definitely a new crop I thought it was kind of cool when I saw it so I'm giving it a try see what happens I always pick one or two new plants that I've never grown before to try and I think that's important just it keeps keeps I don't know some diversity these ones here have just come up these are lima beans and they really like warm weather so they're just starting starting to make their true leaves so you got to plant these always a little bit later in our season because it doesn't warm up enough to grow lima beans until middle of June um, or closer to the end of June depending on the weather and uh, do you see that little guy there's a ladybug crawling all over that that leaf where did he go there he is so Coming to the next row here, we have some Aunt Molly ground cherries. Now they're not too, too big yet, but they actually do have some ground cherries on them. They're growing faster now that we've got some heat, and I'll show you, we got some, some blossoms there. Look at that. Aren't they beautiful? They're absolutely gorgeous. And I know one of these actually have a ground cherry on them, but, but uh, I don't but I don't can't remember which one but anyway so they're doing really good these will I mean they've got a long time to grow and they keep what I like about at Molly's ground cherries is that every time they make a new set of leaves they also bloom as they go so they've got a continuous supply of fruit once they get going and I'm just gonna look oh look this one look 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 at the little surprise see that right there hanging that's a little ground cherry. That is so cool. I just love that they're like these little packages. Oh my goodness, look at this one. You see that? There's a way bigger one. Oh my goodness, look at that. That is so cool. For the end of June in our area in Northern Alberta, Canada, to have little ground cherries already forming is like super exciting because sometimes you don't even get anything. So they're definitely doing good. And when I see a weed, I just kind of pull her out. 
So they're 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 picking up. They're picking up. We got a week here. Where it's really hot and 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 sunny, and so everything is just going to town. Plus, right now we have daylight all the way to 12 o'clock midnight, and we have daylight start, and then it goes sort of dark, and then. Uh, it's like lightening up already four in the morning. So we have four hours of sort of darkness. All the rest are daylight. So, so up north here, yes, we may have a short growing season, but it's definitely extended with the, with the extension of the daylight hours. So look at these beautiful blossoms. If my camera can just focus on them, there we go. These are huckleberries. So I'm, de I'm growing some huckleberries this year. Actually, I'm growing a little bit of a row of huckleberries. Um, these hoops that you see were on here because we didn't, ha we had frost till June 3rd. And so I had covered some of these rows with plastic just to protect them from the frost. And so they would get going. And now the hoops are just left here. I'm slowly taking them away and and we don't need them anymore but you up north here you gotta love gardening with with plastic because otherwise you don't plant anything in may we had so much frost so these um plants are just going my my plan is that huckleberries don't taste very good raw but they're awesome cooked is to make some jams and jellies out of them get some of that in there um and so right here this row oh this is the one of my most exciting rows of the garden and my kids as well this is tom thumb popcorn last year i grew like 25 plants of palm of tom thumb popcorn that's almost like a tongue tongue twister for me but this year i have a 33 foot five 33 foot long row five feet wide of tom thumb popcorn and we got a gallon of seed off of our little tiny plot last year it was a test plot to see what even worked i popped that popcorn it was the best tasting popcorn i've ever had and now i'm growing this massive roll because family night in the middle of winter like we hardly we don't even watch a tv and it's like work 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 garden garden we go crazy but then in winter every friday or every saturday night is family movie night and we watch a movie together and we enjoy popcorn with tomato powder and fresh butter from the freezer from our cows or co or, or with coconut um oil and we just enjoy the fruits of our labor in the winter so that is an exciting row okay so this is my little lettuce row i've got a few varieties of lettuce you can see where i've harvested this beautiful um uh, burgundy lettuce i honestly can't remember the name but it is coming and it's just so gorgeous in color this one here is one of my favorites. It grows so well up here and so quick. It's the it's a black Simpson lettuce. Absolutely love it. So this is my little lettuce row here. And then I've got some dill growing in this one. This one is coming a little bit slower. The dill isn't coming up as fast, but it is coming. And uh, so we got some dill dill going here. A nice row of dill. I really like um, harvesting quite a bit of their uh, leaves so so and can with their heads so we love lots of dill okay what have i missed here in the garden oh my word i missed the really important row here okay we got some more lima beans over here we got some more coming they're looking good and then this one here is stevia so i have a 25 five foot row of stevia growing and we had harvested the leaves i would say uh, two weeks ago we got eight cups of leaves and they are doing fantastic and you can see the new leaves have grown bigger now and so we're going to start harvesting these leaves and so it's this continuous harvesting when you continue to harvest stevia i'm finding the leaves that are coming 
um, grow faster and you get a better harvest. So you got to really keep up with the stevia. These ones here, I experimented at putting cuttings right in the ground and look at them. They're looking good. Super, super good. Again, we have the hoops over because I had these planted out when it was still freezing at night just with plastic over and it protected them just enough. Um, and so some of these are smaller again this side some of them are smaller because i planted them in as a just a little tiny plant and they're doing fantastic so these leaves here so you can see the leaves the diversity they're just so different and these ones are smaller these so these ones can get harvested um this one here look at those beautiful size leaves so we're about a week away from harvesting from this plant right there um, same with this one here. You can see um, how each, they're, they're like these little compact little bushes. And then you have some that grow up to like little, little trees, I, I like calling them. This one here, you can see these beautiful, beautiful leaves. So this is about a week away from harvesting. So what we do is we take all these bigger leaves off and leave the smaller ones so they can grow up. And then we have a, one here that's going into flower and I'm leaving it to go, I'm letting it go into flower. So you can see they got uh, a little flower heads there. So this is my row. So we're growing our own sugar. And this is a big deal for my cookbook as well because I'm teaching you guys everything that I know about stevia and all the pictures and all the information is all from my personal experience growing this plant. So you can see the diversity of leaves. So I'm going to actually pluck this leaf off and show you guys. Look, look at this. Look how big this is. Okay. And, and then let's go back to this beautiful plant. And this is a mature leaf right here. And I'm just going to, it's a little bit hard with one hand. And I'm going to just put it down here on the ground. And I'm going to show you the different sizes of leaves. Look at that. It's the more that I grow the seeds, the more I realize they're kind of like potato plants where if you grow a whole bunch of different seeds from a potato plant, you get a whole bunch of different shapes and sizes of potatoes. Well, the same thing goes with stevia seeds. Like out of one pack of stevia seeds, you can get so much diversity and what I do is I love these bigger leaves is that I take the cuttings off of those plants to continue them on. Um, because the cuttings are true to the plant. So I got this all in the cookbook. Oh, lots. It's like a jam-packed growing section of the cookbook because I want to download all the information that I've learned to you. And so this one's more like a, a medium-sized leaves. You see how, how round that is and how beautiful, you know, this plant is. These leaves can get harvested. And then we have um, this one here. They, they are opening up into seed as well. I need a few to cross pollinate. And so we're definitely, um, I got this one here. This one's going into flower. So I'm leaving a few into flower and the rest we're, we're harvesting. So that's, that's just a little look at the row that I've got going here. Um, I got some more huckleberries on this side of things. Now what else haven't I mentioned about the garden? Okay, this big, huge um, covering, this is actually cabbage covering. So what we did was we had to make it cat proof because the cats figured out, the cats figured out how to bite my fabric, rip it and get into it. So we had to come up with something that we could keep the cats out but keep the moths out. So we just got snow fencing. My husband had these just kicking around. We put everything together. Then we clipped the fabric but it stops the cats from going into it. So underneath that is cabbage and kale. Um, and it's just, and this whole section right here opens up so we can open that up and do maintenance now that we have opened this hut up and you can see that this just sits right on top now let's see what is actually now i'm going to show you what's underneath now i've only transplanted these about four days because it took some ingenuity to put this together and it definitely um, got a little bit later in the season than what i wanted to but things got planted and that's the main thing
So here we want to keep those nasty um, moths away, those white mo cabbage moths. So there's actually um, just, just, so there's actually a rod here and it's just um, held on with some clips. And so we're going to just sneak underneath here. Now these are really, really light. So the trick is to do this while I'm with one hand. That's the trick. So just give me a second here. Do, do, do. Let's take a look. So we're just going to get underneath this hut. Okay, here we go. So this is what's underneath. So you can see that we've got really good height. It's actually four feet high, so plenty of height. And you can see my cabbage. This is just green cabbage plants. And then way down there is kale. But you can see that they're still kind of getting over shock. They got really big in their container. But you know how life is. Sometimes things don't go as planned. But what got as planned is that we have an area that is um, secure, cat proof, and moth proof. That's the biggest thing. So looking good, looking good, considered that when I transplanted these, they flat lined on me. So they're definitely looking really good. And the kale is in the back there. So this is just going to fill out and just be awesome. And next year, guess what? We have the structure built. All we have to do is put it up and be done and we can be ahead of the season that way. It's the kale. Looking really good. We got peas. Peas right here. Oh, look at them. Oh, absolutely beautifully growing peas. Um, they're about two feet tall. So I expect them to, to bloom in another couple of weeks. So that's pretty exciting. And then cucumbers. Of course, we've got to have some cucumbers. These are national pickling cucumbers, are about my favorite, and they are starting to bloom. So actually, today or tomorrow, we're actually going to remove this plastic that's been protecting them since the third week of May. And so now I really need to make sure the bees get on here and start pollinating. But if we don't have them underneath this tunnel, then we don't get any cucumbers because because this tunnel creates some warmth because we can get pretty chilly and even the days we got rain can really devastate your cucumber crops growing up north here so right now for the last two weeks I've had it just open on each end but that plastic creates that warmth that the cucumbers need so it's like a mini greenhouse I'm gonna show you on the other side here kind of how it looks so take a look okay absolutely I got a little bit of my shadow in here sorry guys but you can kind of take take a look here from this angle absolutely beautiful so once we take the plastic off then I'll do some weeding um, get get rid of the weeds on each side clean it up and we're gonna have a wonderful cucumber harvest absolutely so they're gonna start blooming soon so that's what's happening in the garden um, area and this this year it's so exciting because our tractor shed we had one of those with just the cover over it it ripped um, and so he took it and converted it into a greenhouse now he has plans on building me a really fancy all year round greenhouse for up north here but I was pretty excited just to have this and so I have all my beefsteak tomato plants in here so we kept the original door so that can open and close but what we did was we covered it with a really heavy plastic um, over it which turned out really good and so I have tomato plants growing in here and so we're just gonna set up a system to make sure they don't fall over I'm gonna work on that this week but I also have stevia plants growing in the greenhouse to see how they do so these are all stevia cuttings that I took off from the other plants and so this is just such a blessing. I, I wanted a greenhouse for like six years ever since we moved on this property. And so I have some that are blooming. This is a mountain princess plant. Look at those blossoms. Aren't they gorgeous? They're opening up. 
and uh, and you notice that I stripped the leaves from the bottom I did that very purposely and uh, and getting them ready to to get um, structures put around them so they don't fall over but when you strip some of the leaves the plants put the energy into the flowers and to fruit production and not just creating leaves so there's some beautiful flowers there um, absolutely gorgeous tomato plants and these are all beefsteak types because if I have beefsteak outside they don't have enough time to grow um, if I have them in a greenhouse then we got that heat up north now take a look you guys look at this blossom and look at my thumb holy smokes that's huge okay um, these ones are the Hungarian heart tomatoes and then I got some like little red robin plants, tomato plants, just to grow in front because what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, probably trim up this leaf here and then I'm going to train these up on this um, mesh and it goes all the way up here like that because these ones are indetermined so these are my only indetermined while everything else is determined um, so that makes a huge difference so they'll definitely be trained now I have a bigger one here and take a look at those blossoms they're huge absolutely huge and gorgeous and so this one here again has the same kind of concept you know I'm I'm training it and make sure it's on this um, uh, trellis and they're doing absolutely phenomenal same with here like when you trim up the, those leaves like I stripped all the leaves down here it cleans things up too and it really helps for, um, to prevent disease um, with the tomato plants it gives good airflow and and again the plant puts that energy then into the blossoms instead of just making a whole bunch of leaves so again we got some romas here growing beautifully and everything is starting to um, set fruit and get that really good growth now that we've got long daylight and we finally got some heat it's been kind of rainy but now we got the heat so we got some more more um, flowers here this one here is a Siberian these flowers will be smaller because this is like a medium-sized tomato plant or sorry it's like me medium-sized fruit um, uh, this is one of my favorite varieties because if you don't want a beef steak then the Siberian tomato is just your perfect size so they're, they're looking beautiful oh I want to just thank you thank you to my hubby for putting this up for me this year otherwise I would have put these outside and I was hoping for the best but this will basically extend the season and to make sure we get a wonderful big um, tomato harvest with juicy tomatoes that I mean we use tomatoes in everything and we use and we'll take all this and put it into tomato powder because tomato powder will um, make paste and our sauces and everything from that besides the mystery keeper this row right here in the middle these ones right here all of these are called mystery keeper and the mystery keeper actually ripens from the inside out instead of the normal tomato from the outside in so they're perfect storage tomatoes and they last a long long time so you actually pick them green at the end of the season and then you wrap each individual tomato in like a newspaper or some kind of really light tissue paper and then you put them into storage and you got fresh tomatoes in storage for like they can last for up to six months so I'm getting my variety back I've had the seed this seed that I'm growing here from there is like 10 years old but I since we moved out here I didn't have a greenhouse and they don't do well with our short growing season especially with the weather and then my husband put up this greenhouse and I got some varieties that I loved when I had a greenhouse in the other area growing so this is pretty exciting very very exciting for me and lastly here I'm just gonna take you to the orchard where the strawberries are I mean I can make this video probably a few hours long because when I get going about plants I just get so super excited like the Haskups look at these beauties okay this row here 
that you're seeing is four years old. The next row is three years old and the next row after that is just planted last year and you'll see forks and yes I know there's a lot of forks in this row but I've got guinea fowl that patrol this area and the guinea fowl are awesome because they eat the bugs but when the ground is dry like in the middle here they dust bathe and they wreck my plants so until these plants get to the size of these plants I grow forks with them and that just prevents the guineas from wrecking my plants but also another thing is prevents the cats from using the bathroom in my rows as well now this one here it will be ready to harvest oh look at that you've got berries we've got berries so much we had one of the most delicious desserts was a fresh chocolate pudding with Everybody got almost a third of a cup of Haskups yesterday in their bowl and I got a family of eight. So that's a lot of Haskups and fresh whipped cream on top. Oh, it was so good. And all of these weren't ready to be picked yesterday. And now the Haskups with this heat on, we got to pick the Haskups every single day because they ripen so quickly and we get such a good harvest off of them. If you live in a northern climate, Haskups, you've got to have Haskups. I'm almost ready to get another row of Haskups in this um, orchard because they're, they do so, so well. So like these were just planted last year, they produce a little bit of fruit. Next year they'll produce fruit, but really until they're four years old is when you start getting the good harvest. And make sure when you grow Haskups to always get different varieties. There's about 10 different varieties of Haskups here. And that way you're, you yield high. Oh, I absolutely love it. Okay, so we made um, some blueberry beds this year. They don't look like anything much because there's little blueberries growing in here that we planted in this year. So this is um, a work in progress. And then our strawberries. Holy man, look at them go. They are blooming like crazy. They are growing strawberries. Last year with the heat wave, literally the strawberries just shriveled up to absolutely nothing. Um, this year they're lush, they're upright. There's so many strawberries gonna come. It just, it's so exciting. So between these fruit trees that we have is about 20 feet. So we plant the strawberries in between the fruit trees to maximize the space. And this has been a working progress um, to get it this, this beautiful. And I'm just so proud of these strawberries and the work that myself and my family have put in to maintain this orchard. Now, all the apple trees, all the trees, all of them bloomed this year for the first time. Remember, when you do up an orchard, it takes a little while to get things going. So we got the first signs of blossoms, which is really cool. So we're on year um, four. Some of these plants are on year three. So this one here is a pear, and we got the asparagus growing in these rows. Um, which is awesome. We can't harvest for the next three years, but we've got asparagus growing in between these ones here. And then we've got a really young apple tree here. Plus, okay, I'm going to just detour and show you something really cool. Okay, take a look at this. You see that? Those are grape bunches. That's right. And last year, the grapes started to produce and I know I said this a million times, we had the heat wave, but weather plays such an important and critical role when you're talking about gardening. And everything got shriveled, but look at this. Look at all these. One, two, three, and, and I, they're all growing on, on a central stalk. So there's three, of the, three um, central stalks here that I want just to kind of branch out. And look at these, absolutely gorgeous. Now, I'm just hoping that they grow a bit taller because we got a lot of uh, uh, kill over the last um, little bit here. Let me try to get my shadow out of the way here. But I'm really hoping 
that they're gonna grow up and and because there's so much good growth this year that they won't die back so I gotta tie this one up here um, and again these are growing out of only a couple of central stalks like I got it pruned down to about two and uh, so, so the energy goes into all that so I'm really I'm really hoping for grapes Woo! grapes would be awesome like these I've never seen them so happy for a long time since we planted them because this year has been phenomenal so let's just pray that the weather continues to hold means that we're gonna get a good hay harvest animals will get fed you know it just we need it up here we need it so I could continue going on and on but I probably already made this video long enough but like I said once I get going with the plants I just can't stop because they're just phenomenal I just love growing and so I'm gonna show you what it looks like in another month and a half we're gonna be crazy harvesting um, and and really this year I really want to can everything with stevia so this is gonna be a big year of getting and figuring out how to get the recipes right with canning because it's so important because that's where so much sugar is is in canning and preserving so I've got some really good ideas where I really want to make you know in a year or so the a canning book that will have the alternative on how to can with honey or with stevia because I know how to can with honey or can with stevia or can with no sugar how, how can we do that so I want to really really um, push myself so everything is canned with stevia so definitely need a very good harvest so all that is coming it's gonna be phenomenal and I just want to say thank you so much to all of you um, being patient as I know I don't post every week it's just there's so much happening here and we really need to get everything growing. It's a really critical time for our family and to make sure we have those stores for us because we live off of them during the winter. So I want to thank you so much. Check out our website and I'll see you on the next video.